Hello! Today we're going to talk about something that has come up a lot when I talk to different customers about SharePoint. And that is the topic of building an organization chart, otherwise known as an org chart. There are lots of different tools. I've seen this done different ways. Um, in fact, I've seen examples where people just put it together using Microsoft Excel. And that certainly can get the job done, but it's not especially an elegant solution. And of course, that's not a part of SharePoint. What we're gonna look at today's video is a way that you can build a dynamic org chart in your SharePoint environment that's easy to update and maintain and also looks very nice. So we're gonna walk through all the steps so that you can uh, set up the same type of solution in your own environment and uh, we'll go through everything. So here we go. Okay, here I am at the SharePoint-Boards.com site. Um, if you've never been there, you can uh, go to the site to sign up for a free account, which gets you access to 20 templates. Um, the one I'm showing today is part of the subscription, um, which includes, uh, as of now, a total of 128 different SharePoint templates. Um, so this is accessible at the site, and I'm going to walk you through all the steps in terms of how this works and what you're going to do. So I am uh, setting up a list here. Um, what you're gonna do as a first step is download a list template. That is required in this case. It is an STP file. It's easy to get. You can simply click on this org chart link. That will download a small file to your local computer called orgchart.stp. And then at that point, you do need to upload that to your list templates gallery. If some of what I just described to you sounds unfamiliar or something you haven't done for a while, what you should do is go to the notes section and click on the link where it says learn about uploading list templates. That will give you detailed instructions and describe precisely what you need to do to be able to upload the list template to your SharePoint environment so that you can use this solution. So that is your first step. Once you have uploaded the list template, you will be able to create a list which will have the fields that you see on this screen. You're going to have a list um, which I just named org chart. You can name the list what you want, but you do need to create your list from that template. So this has some pretty easy to understand obvious fields in it. You're going to have a people field called person uh, for each of the people that you're going to show on the org, org chart. Um, and then you have fields for job title department. You can upload a picture that will make things look much nicer. And then there are other settings which will become more obvious once I apply the template, which control uh, the connectors, lines that go between the different people on the chart. And then you can control the position uh, based on two fields for row and column. And then we have settings for text color and background color those are configured individually for cards, so you can have different sections of your org chart look differently. You will notice there's two views provided in there, and in general what's intended, the all items will be used just for general list management. The org chart view is where we're going to apply our actual template. So now we can start to get to the fun stuff. In the SharePoint dashboards tool, you can see a preview of how things are going to look. So you can fine tune that and do things like um, adjust the canvas width, um, which is just the, the background of the chart to whatever you think that needs to be. And then, uh, of course, you want to put in a title for that. So I'll put it in my business. And that updates that part for me. And then you can do things like control the card width and stuff like that. Now, at the bottom, you have some choices. This template can either pull pictures, job title, and department from the user profile in Microsoft 365, 
or alternatively, you can enter those values directly in the list. So you've got an option here. So, or you can actually omit pictures entirely. That's not going to look as nice, but um, that it, those are your options there. So for our demonstration, I'm going to use the defaults, which are lists, but just letting you know you can hook into those uh, Microsoft 365 profiles to have that information pulled automatically. So let's go ahead and copy the template over and um, we'll get started. So what I need to do is click on this view drop down, select format current view, and then click on advanced mode and paste. All right, there's my chart. As you can see, it's overrunning the uh, chart canvas, which is not a big deal. I simply just come back over here and I say, oh, whoops, I need a canvas size that's bigger. So I just change the height, copy the template, and then I can bounce right back over to SharePoint and select all and paste again. Okay, now it's uh, covering my area just fine. So let's look at a little bit and understand how this works. And I'll demonstrate that by adding another person to my org chart. So this is interactive. You'll notice there's edit buttons. And what I recommend is you can um, adjust that. You can make a view um, for editing and you can make a view which is just for display only. Um, so in fact, let me demonstrate that concept right now. I'll do save view as um, org chart edit. Okay, and then I'll do format current view. And there's a checkbox here that says edit mode. That means I want this to be showing with the edit button so I can make adjustments. So I'll copy that. And then I'm going to go over here and apply that template. Okay, so that one's edit mode. And then let's do the one regular org chart. Um, we want it to show without these edit buttons. So the way I do that is come back over here, uncheck edit mode. Notice the buttons are gone in my preview. I click copy template and then I can come back to this one, do format, select all, and paste. Okay, you see the edit buttons are gone. So that's what you want the users to see. So um, when I'm making updates, I'm now gonna use my org chart edit view. And as I mentioned, as a demonstration, what I'm gonna do is add somebody. So I have a bunch of fictional people that I'm using. I'm gonna add one uh, for a person called Adam Apple. And then I'm going to fill in some fictional information. Okay, so we'll say he's the customer service supervisor, manager. Well, I have another customer service manager. Let's do accounting manager. And of course, he's in the accounting department. Um, and I'm, that's it. That's all I need to do to get started. Okay, there's Adam. So by default, it's going to start in the upper left in the grid. Now I need to move. Adam into the right place in my org chart. And it's nice how you can do that. You click on the edit button, it's gonna open up the panel, and then I've got a row and a column setting. So what I do is just, first of all, let's get him down to the right row. So I say third row, there is Adam on the third row, and then I need to move him over. So now I'm gonna adjust the column, and let's try five. No, that was a little too far. Now we do have this half columns concept, and that's because cards can straddle between other ones. So you can do 0.5. So that's what I'm doing in this case. So I just say 4.5 and it's just a drop down picker. So it's not hard to work with. Well, there's a problem. I don't have the lines connecting it. So there's some other fields for that and they're called uh, connector fields. Okay, so I go to the field that says top connector and I have options for none. Uh, I have some other options too, but in this case I just need up and then I still need that to connect to Eric who's right above so I go to bottom connector for Eric and I say now there's a line below and now I've added Adam to my org chart um, and just for practice we'll do one more um, let's add um, I've got one named Felicia there's Felicia um, we'll say Felicia is um, 
HR support, and of course human resources. That's it. When you create new people, that's all you have to do just to get started. And then we'll just move Felicia down the chart. We'll put uh, Felicia under Cindy. So um, again, I can just click this edit button. It'll open up this pop-up dialog and I can just say, okay, I want that to go down to row four. And then, um, whoops, I did the wrong column. I meant to do row four. And then I just need to move Felicia over the left one. So that's column 3.5. Um, we need the top connector. Remember that part, do the line. And then I need to update Cindy to do the bottom connector line for her. And there we go. Now we've updated our chart. Now what's cool about this is, as you would expect, this is just a cluster of, looks like eight people. And obviously when you're building organization charts, you're gonna have many more. This is unlimited in terms of the size. So as you notice, there's already scroll bars in here, but I can make this canvas size as big as I want. Just to prove that out, I'm gonna change this to 2000 um, and we'll make the canvas height 1200. And then um, I'll just copy the template and that's all that I need to do to make that adjustment. So I can do format current view, just select all, paste. Okay, and so you'll see now I've got more room. I can add more people and um, you know put them wherever I want. And then if I want to move these things over, I can go ahead and you know do that as well. So um, there's all kinds of different ways that I can adjust that. Now, if I'm just doing, um, you know, bulk edit of users and that type of thing, maybe I just am working on loading profile pictures, then I go to the regular SharePoint list view. So I go to my all items view. There's the regular side panel that you're used to. And um, as I mentioned before, you can either use the option to load pictures directly from the list, or um, if you have it in their Microsoft 365 profiles, you can just tap into that instead so you've got some different options. Now there is one scenario that can come up where you may need to just have a line. There's not going to be a card. And in that case you're going to use this line only option. Just to help that make some more sense to you, I'll go ahead and demonstrate how that works real quick. Okay, so you may be branching off into you know a whole different section of your org chart. Um, so I took off the edit button. I need to fix that. So um, what I need to do is just check the edit mode and then apply the template and I'll get my edit buttons back, which I need for that view. Select all, paste. Um, and then let me show you what I mean about the line connector. Let's just say for argument's sake, I need to have a whole nother branch of this tree if you want to think of it that way. So I'm going to move um, Eric over. So we'll say, whoops, you're going to be at uh, having a different column. So we'll do column 5.5. Okay, Eric's moved over. Adam, we're going to move Adam over too. So Adam's now 5.5. Okay, and then obviously we've got a problem here. Well, I don't have any purse in here. I just need to connect the line. So there's a really easy way to do that. So what you do is create a record, and that's what this line only field is for. I just say line only, top connector, left, right. It will simply make a record which is nothing more than that simple line. And then I just move it into place. So I go row two, and then I say um, column 4.5. That's it. So in edit mode, I see this stuff, but I can switch back over to the regular view. And of course, I'm not going to see that. This view, I need to update to make the canvas bigger, but that's a quite an easy fix. I just can go to that, copy the template again. So as you can tell, I can keep um, you know, reapplying that quite quickly in case you make adjustments. So there we go. There's our bigger canvas. So this is very extensible. You can make um, a large tree. 
what I would recommend is that you actually make different views. So I could use the same list and do filtered views where I show um, specific teams. So I could uh, cycle through those up here. And then of course you can embed this on SharePoint pages um, as well. So I hope you found that interesting. For any of you guys out there that want to be able to put an org chart directly in your SharePoint environment and be able to manage it easily where you can make adjustments to add or remove people and go ahead and interact with it to be able to move these cards around into the right locations, this is exactly what you need. So to look at this further, this is a template that's available at the SharePoint-Boards.com site. And you can play around with this um, preview tool just to see you know, what it's going to look like, how it's going to work, that type of thing. All of these things are adjustable. And then, um, as I mentioned, if you don't already have a user account for SharePoint Dashboards, you can sign up for that for free and get access to 20 free templates. Those are the ones with the green check boxes and then if you want to go on to get access to all those the subscription option allows you access to all of the templates of which there are currently 128 um, so lots of cool stuff to check out on the site um, i hope you like that and hopefully that will get you on track to go ahead and set up your own org charts directly in sharepoint There is another template that I'm releasing directly after this, which is closely related, and that is a flow chart or a process chart, process diagram, lots of different names for it, but this would be a more generic diagram. As you can tell in this one, generally it's a tree and there's, uh, we're not thinking about a process necessarily, just in hierarchy of people. The process diagram is gonna allow you to draw out a process, which would have arrows going in different directions and then you can also have different shapes and that type of thing and of course there are really nice tools out there to make these kind of things um, but not to my knowledge a way to create something like that directly in SharePoint so um, that is going to be the next thing coming out on this site so just giving you a little preview of what's to come so thank you again and hope you find that interesting